Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is Unique Paths. So in this question, we are given a M into N grid and there is a robo located at the top left corner that is at 0, 0 and at one point of time, the robo can either move one step to the down or one step to the right. And we need to return the number of possible unique paths that the robo can take to reach the bottom right. So let's take a look at the example one and see how this question can be solved. I've taken the same example that given us. M is equal to three and N is equal to seven. M stands for the number of rows and N stands for the number of columns. So there is a robo starting at the top left corner and we need to find the number of unique paths it can take to reach the bottom right corner. And at one point of time, the robo can either move one step down or one step to the right. It cannot move diagonally. Since we have to go to the farthest bottom right, we can use a bottom up approach to build a DP array of size M into N and we find out the final answer based on the sub problems. So the number of ways a robo can move to one step to the right is one and the number of ways robo can move one step down is one. And using these two values, we can find out how many ways it will take to reach this node. So you can add the value from the current cell to these two cells. So one plus one, is equal to 2. So the two ways in which the robo can reach this cell is this is one way and this is the second way. And we can do the same to fill up the entire DP array and our result will finally be in the last cell. So the number of ways to reach the current starting index is 1 and the number of ways to reach the last column in the first row is also 1 because you can only reach from here. And if this is 1, this will also be 1. Similarly, the entire row will be 1. And the number of ways to reach the bottom cell from the top is 1. The number of ways to reach the bottom left corner is also 1. So this is how we are going to start filling our DP array. So the elements in the first row and in the elements in the first column will be our foundation to build our DP array. So you can see that the first row and the first column are filled with one. That is how you start building the DP array. You fill the first row and the first column with ones. And now we start our iteration from one comma one, that is this cell. And all the cells from here will be built from its previous row and previous column value. So this cell is equal to one plus one equal to two. This cell is equal to two plus one equal to three. This cell is equal to 3 plus 1 equal to 4. This cell is equal to 4 plus 1 equal to 5. This cell is equal to 5 plus 1 equal to 6. This cell is equal to 6 plus 1 equal to 7. And now this cell is equal to 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. This cell is equal to 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. This cell is equal to 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. This cell is equal to 10 plus 5 is equal to 15. This cell is equal to 15 plus 6 is equal to 21. And the last cell is equal to 21 plus 7 is equal to 28. So finally, our answer is present at this cell. So 28 will be our final answer. So this is how our final DPRA will look. And our final answer will be present at the bottom right corner. Now let's implement these steps in a Java program. Coming to the function, this is the function name. And these are the two integers passed as parameters m and n. m stands for the number of rows and n stands for the number of columns. And we need to return an integer as output representing the number of ways we can reach the bottom right from the top left. As I mentioned, let's build our DP array. And now inside the DP array, we need to fill the first row and the first column with ones. And we'll use this first row and first column as a foundation to build the rest of the DP array. So let's iterate through the rows. So with this, we have filled our first column. Now let's fill the first row with ones. Now we filled our first row also with ones and now we have to build this part of the DP array. So we start from the first row and the first column. So we need two loops. The outer loop will be iterating through the rows. We start from the first row. Now let's start from the first column. And now we have to fill the current cell with the sum of the left cell 
and its top cell. So i is initially 1 is 0 and j is 1 so 0 1 0 1 is this element so this will take the element from the top cell and this will take the element from the left cell and this will happen for all the elements until we reach the bottom right and now our answer is stored in the bottom right cell so let's return whatever is present in that cell so for this example m is equal to 3 3 minus 1 and n equal to 7 7 minus 1 so dp of 2 6 2 is this row and 6 is this column and wherever it meets is the bottom right so we return that value as an integer now let's try to run the code the test cases are running let's submit the code there you have it a solution has been accepted the time complexity of this approach is o of m into n where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns and the space complexity is also o of m into n because we are building a dp array to find our answer that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video